From 2005 to 2007, Mick Garris, director of Critters 2, Sleepwalkers, and the 1994 The Stand miniseries, produced an anthology series for Showtime titled Masters 4, tapping greats like John Carpenter, Joe Dante, Toby Hooper, and as well as directing one himself titled Chocolate, and each episode being a short film. This week we'll be exploring some of my favorites. Hi friend, today we're talking about pro-life. 15-year-old Angelique is trapped in a women's clinic outside of town, along with the workers and other patients. Outside is her father, Dwayne, a pro-life activist, armed and ready to break in to get his daughter. Daughter Alex O'Shea and Dr. Kim Grant try to help Angelique as her pregnancy accelerates. Directed by John Carpenter, written by Drew McQueenie and Rebecca Swan, starring Caitlin Wax, Emmanuel Voiget, Mark Furstein, and Ron Perlman. If you've seen Assault on Precinct 13, this is kind of similar. A siege flick where a group of armed men converge on a building where the people inside are trying to protect themselves. But this has a horror spin to it. While it sort of does discuss pro-life and pro-choice a bit, it doesn't focus on it. So regardless of where you stand, this doesn't shove a side in your face. At the core, as both the writers and John Carpenter have said, it's a monster movie. There's two stories happening at the same time. Dwayne and his sons breaking into the clinic, and Dr. O'Shea and Dr. Grant attend to Angelique as she's about to give birth. But because of the performances, both are fascinating. Caitlin Wax plays Angelique. She had previously appeared in more family-friended movies, like two of the Air Bud films, World Pup and Seventh Inning Stretch, and the straight-to-video Inspector Gadget 2, where she played Penny. Here, she went all in as the young woman who was in a traumatic situation trying to deal and she really steals all the scenes that she's in. Mark Furstein plays Dr. Alex O'Shea. Many probably will know him as Hank Lawson on Royal Pains. He, along with Emmanuel Voiget, who plays Dr. Kim Grant, spend much of the film reacting to Wax. They're not really standouts, but they don't slouch either. It's almost like they're the connection for the audience. They're confused about what's happening with Angelique until the big reveal near the end. Voyager has appeared in House of the Dead 2, Saw 2, Supernatural, and various other movies and television. The two are great together. It feels like that it's more about their reaction than anything, as they lead us through the movie. Ron Perlman plays Dwayne, Angelique's father. He's always been great as both the hero and the villain. Here, he's a religious man that believes that he's doing the right thing. His actions are villainous, but he thinks he's righteous. It could have came off more of a stereotype, but it was written well enough to where he becomes almost an anti-hero. A highlight is the score, which was done by Cody Carpenter, and it feels very much like his father John Carpenter's scores. The two went on to do music for the recent Halloween trilogy and the Firestarter remake in 2022. This score definitely adds to the tension of the film. He pulls together an action score and a horror score that really ties in the two stories that are being told. For me, the negatives are really minor. There's a moment where Angelique is getting an ultrasound and Dr. O'Shea takes the transducer, the little dealie that the doctor presses against the abdomen, away from her skin and it shows the internal movement on the screen. It's something that happens a lot in movies, so it's easy to look past, but it was something that I couldn't help but notice. Really though, if you watch John Carpenter films, you can tell that he really doesn't dwell on continuity. For him, moving the story forward and entertaining the audience is what comes first. This film takes a few minutes to get into the horror aspect, but after that, it's pretty fast paced. I really dig this one. It's a standout from the Masters of Horror series. If you're a fan of Carpenter and haven't seen this, I recommend it. Don't let the title persuade you to not see it. While it does have a bit of politics to it, it's not the focus of the film. Did you see this? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, check out one of these videos.